Show me what you got. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is an extension of the Arkhamverse, and it's really about now reframing the story and telling it from the villain's point of view. Where are we going, and who are we killing? It's a mixture of lots of the things I hope the fans like about Rocksteady, but like a whole massive chunk of new stuff that they've never seen before. <laughs> We've always seen Batman's perspective on this world, and we thought it'd be really fun and enjoyable to see this universe, like through the eyes of the villains. We're picking up the story five years after the end of Arkham Knight, and a lot's changed in that time. Just checking. We're all seeing that thing, right? Brainiac has invaded Earth, and he's this huge threat overlooking Metropolis. He's taken over Metropolis City. The Justice League are there to try and save the city. But Brainiac has captured and brainwashed them and turned them against the very people they've been sworn to protect. Oh, fuck, it's Superman! So the Justice League share the same goal as Brainiac to take over Earth and turn it into the new Kalu. What we've created is a classic Justice League, but with the sense that there's something wrong with them. They are now doing Brainiac's bidding, and Amanda Waller scrambles to try to uh, remedy this and essentially save the Earth. And she recruits our four lovable characters into fighting the Justice League in an effort to reclaim the Earth and thwart Brainiac's plans. Your new mission is to kill the Justice League. The members of the Suicide Squad are Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, Deadshot, and King Shark. Harley Quinn is definitely the most acrobatic of, of the crew. She's always moving, she's always flying through the air in kind of barely controlled ways. The feeling of swinging and the momentum and the kind of physicality of it and, and trying to keep that momentum going and use that to go over buildings or swing under bridges and chain that into kind of the, the grapple mechanic that she's got, it just feels spot on. I'm a freaking superstar! Deadshot has the iconic Deadshot look, but with a rocksteady twist. He's got a real swagger to him. And in this game, he can also hover with his jetpack. He's super precise, he uses sniper rifles, assault rifles and pistols, and they all fit with his sort of the fantasy of playing as Deadshot as this master assassin. Are you on Team Waller? Or Team Get the Hell Out of This Mess? King Shark, to me, as, as a person, is, well, as a fish is this incredible character who's super well-read and super well-to-do and I'm sure could smash an operatic performance. Actually, I'm the son of a god. It is my shame to suffer mortals and their buffoonery. But also doesn't really know simple words or simple things that are going on. I think that's brilliant. In terms of combat, he is a brute. He is a, a tank character. He can take more damage. His abilities all lean into the fact that he wants to get in a bit more close and personal. He's the fastest melee character. Captain Boomerang's got his um, Speed Force gauntlet that he can use together with his boomerang. He can throw it to any point in space and Speed Force to that point along the walls, along the floor, and get wherever he wants to go. You can use that to get up close, dodge around in midair, taking out the enemies, and then scarper because he, he doesn't want to stick around. Don't worry, guys! I'm here. One of the most exciting parts that connects our game to the DC lore are the support squad. Piss off, Widow. You have Penguin, the arms dealer. You're making guns for us now, bird brain. But also some new faces. Hack, who is a digital ghost that is helping the squad both navigate the world, but also upgrade their neck bombs. That's a big adrenaline spike on a nice bomb sending out. This. Toy Man, who's helping the squad with perfecting gear. And then finally we have Gizmo, who is helping the squad with insane vehicle creations that let you blow shit up. Metropolis is your playground. You're going to get to meet different characters, different villains, and you really get to see these cool, iconic locations. Being the city of tomorrow kind of like meant stark contrast with Gotham City, which is very dirty, it's always raining. And that contrast with like a city that's very grand, it's very clean, it's very functional. The huge difference between Metropolis and Gotham is that Metropolis really acknowledge and really trust Superman. So there is a lot of statues to thank Superman for everything he's done for the city. You're getting to see Metropolis through the villains' eyes. You're getting to experience this world and traverse through this world as the villains. Greetings, Metropolis! 
So the core ability that everything wraps around in Suicide Squad is your traversal. How that works with combat is you're chaining your combat moves together with those traversal moves, and the combat encounters are all designed to push and pull you around the environment in a battlefield that's constantly changing, working out how to use all your different weapons, your guns, your melee attacks, and how to use them all to your best advantage to control the chaos and come out victorious. What's awesome about gunplay is the variety. So there's six core types of weapon families. We've got assault rifles, SMGs, sniper rifles, shotguns, miniguns, and pistols. There's added variety from weapon manufacturers. There's LexCorp weapons, there's GCPD weapons, there's Armortech weapons. Later on in the game, we also have gear sets. The gear sets are villain themed. For example, if you have a Bane gear set and you trigger his buffs in the game, some of it will have the Bane drum, so you feel like Bane and like boom, 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 and then there's like green smoke and you trigger all kinds of effects. So you're basically taking the essence of the villain, you're bringing it into the game. Each character has a power level in the game that we call gear score. As you acquire new gear in the game, your gear score goes up. And as that number goes up, it means that you can take on much harder missions. As part of this progression journey, you will unlock more and more builds, more and more ways to customize your character to really fit the way you want to play. Every firearm in our game is upgradable. So in Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, you're going to get lots of choice to use the weapons that you need and to complete your missions. But most importantly, you will be able to customize your squad to be whatever you like. You can wear whatever you want, any of the outfits. You can be running around in your asylum jail outfit and still have like the best gear score ever. I like it. Our game is a one to four player co-op experience, which means that all the missions in the game have been designed to support solo play, playing with a friend, two friends, or three friends. For the single player fans, you can play in single player with bots filling in the role of the squad so you still feel like you're part of the team. And you can switch them if you want. We we'll try King Shark now, uh, or we can say, well, I think Harley will be a better fit for this mission, so I'm going to switch over and I'm going to try her out. But if you really want to tear it up, going in with a full group of four lets you experience the full mayhem the Suicide Squad has to offer. And you get to really experience the dynamics between how you can all play together in different play styles in order to take on Brainiac and the Justice League. All the fun is right here. When the story's done, your experience doesn't end there. Rocksteady will continue its legacy of supporting the game after it's launched. We're going to deliver lots of new content to our players. We're going to have new playable characters, new weapons, and new missions. For players who like to customize their looks, we'll offer a battle pass that only contains cosmetic items. There's just going to be so much for the players to enjoy. Just picture it. Harley Quinn kills the Justice League. If you like story games, if you like RPG elements, if you like co-op games, if you like customizing your characters, if you want to play as a badass, this game kind of has it all. It's very fast paced, it's really colorful, it's loud and unapologetic and in your face and it's going to be really, really fun. Hey, Metropolis, do you like live executions? Well, don't touch that dial. <laughs> or I'll break your fingers.